Right, good morning and welcome back to Tipple TV and thank you for joining The Average Golfer for some more product testing. I've just completed a video on one of these ping releases. Uh, that was the i210, so make sure you check out that video. And the next one up is the ping i500. Another one of the set of irons that's been released by ping. I said in a previous video that I couldn't wait to get stuck in based on how these things look. It's a proper good looking set of irons. Really like the look of it, but ultimately, everything is down to performance and we'll look at that very very shortly like in the previous video it's going to be very much in two parts we're going to look at uh, how this thing looks we're going to look at how it performs in terms of dry ball data here at four golf on trackman um, but then in part two of this video we'll take it out on the course and see how it performs in different situations in and around the course but first off let's have a sit down see what tech is packed into this club perhaps who this club is aimed at and ultimately how it looks and then get it with some golf balls. Okay, let's start by talking how this thing looks and um, I'm gonna throw some images up on screen. I think uh, a lot will agree it's a pretty stunning looking golf club. Very much a smaller uh, version of the i700 and we'll talk about the tech in this very, very shortly but for the time being, let's just stick to the looks. So as you can see, um, it's this whole, what, what we'll call a one piece design. Uh, there's no cavity at all. It is, um, it's got this Hydra Pearl chrome finish on it. Very much what they're saying is a sort of clean players looking club. One of the striking things about this range from Ping and in some of the releases that they've had of late is how minimal the design is in terms of what they put on it, in terms of colorings and markings. It's a very minimalistic design, just the i500 and the forge wording on the back of the club and then the number of the club on the bottom and that's it. It's stripped down to a very, very neat finish and I like it. If you look at the back of the club, there's just a groove cut out through literally midway through halfway up the club face uh, where it then allows the bottom half the sole of the club just thickens out a little bit and that's where they pack that uh, low cg the interesting thing for me with the i500 range and the i700 is this sort of hollow design and it's all about this ability to let the face of the club sort of flex back it almost again when you look at the slow motion video that uh, ping produced it almost really looks like a sort of springboard effect and it's this ability to produce that effect right across the club face which is interesting because as you well know as average golfers we don't hit out that centre but this sort of face flexing, this margin or margin steel that they use allows that flexibility and allows it to be produced right across the club face so you're getting these fast ball speeds with off centre hits and I think that's the key difference between the older clubs and the newer clubs that we're seeing, it's all about that bigger sweet spot and producing the same and consistent ball speeds from across the face. And that's what Ping are claiming will happen uh, with this i500 and we'll see that very, very shortly indeed. But I have to say, on looks alone, it's a nice, it is literally, if you've seen the uh, i700, it's a much slimmer, more compact version of that. And I've got to say, it really sits nice behind a ball. So that's enough in terms of tech as far as I'm concerned, enough in terms of looks. Now we better see how this thing performs. Right, so as I did with the i210, I'm gonna stop off and give you my opinion after hitting a limited amount of balls, don't get me wrong, with the i500 at this stage. Don't know what Trackman's saying, I don't wanna be guided or swayed by what that says in terms of numbers, so I'm gonna give you my, um, my opinions right now. Now, first of all, it sits very compact behind the ball. Like the way it sits behind the ball, it's a lot different than the i700. It seems hugely different in size, which I'm sure it is. It's got that classic player's iron, as we call them, looks to it from the top of it. Very minimal offset indeed. Everything about it, like the looks of. In terms of what I've seen in terms of ball flight, this again, is this is launched, uh, lofted, 30 degree loft on this seven iron. So strong lofted without being the ridiculous levels. Uh, that we've seen clubs go into. You can get this in a power spec as well, by the way. But yeah, 30 degrees of loft. But once again, what we're seeing with all these clubs, strong lofted, but unbelievably high launch angles. This ball just seems to be going 
defying its 30 degrees worth of loft and it's just flying up there out into the sky and seems to come down uh, an unbelievable descent angle as well. Powerful with the 30 degrees worth of loft without being, I'm certainly, there's no knuckle balls here. I ain't flying this out there like I was the i700s for example. Um, the issue for me perhaps is the feel. Um, Ford's insert in the face and this doesn't match up to being what I would class a Forge club. It's a bit like with the P790s, they did a similar thing. It's forged face, hollow body design, and I think they're not quite um, getting that feel of what I would say is a classic Forge club. So that's where there's a bit of compromise for me in terms of the feel in this one. But overall, I would expect the numbers are gonna be good, and that's the next thing we'll get onto and have a sit down and discuss some dry ball data. Okay, so that's golf balls hit, and uh, I will throw up some numbers for you now and at least see how this thing got on in terms of dry ball data. So here's what we've got from Trackman. Nine shots hit, uh, average carry distance of 157, peak height of 99 feet, launch angle 19.6, ball speed 115, uh, and that spin number at the beginning is a real interesting one at 6,600 revs and some in fact over 7,000. Bit of variation in the numbers in terms of peak height and also that spin number sort of comes and goes a little bit. There's a couple of shots that drop off but having said all that, people who watch my videos frequently will know that me achieving that kind of spin number with an iron lofted at 30 degrees is incredibly high and I think that's the most impressive thing about all these numbers. Yes this is a it's a strongly lofted seven iron or strongly lofted set of uh, irons full stop but it's not overly long it is a long club don't get me wrong but what they've managed to achieve here Ping I think is a very fine balance between getting a strong lofted club with a high launch but also achieving a very high spin number and I think that's really noticeable and really really impressive for me so far. So another part of the test is done, we've talked about how it looks, we've talked about how it feels and now we've got some Trackman dry ball data but now let's see how I got on out there on the course with this, uh, with this club. I played a couple of rounds with it at uh, my home club at Heswell and there is a few shots from out there on the course. Okay, so what did I learn new from out there on the course? And not a great deal, really. I think it, in this instance, it very much performed as it did on dry ball data. It, uh, it did that out there on the course. I think that one noticeable thing for me, um, often different from inside to out, is, uh, is the acoustics. We played out in a, in a sort of wide open environment out there on the course. And I think the sound, which we all talk about as being feel, that often changes. Um, I think it's a fairly loud, I'd almost say clicky kind of sound. I've just reviewed the i210s and I'd call that a real buttery soft feel uh, that they've achieved very, very well in that iron. I think with this, this is a more powerful bang off the face. Uh, it's more explosive in its sound. It's probably the only one negative for me that is still not ticking a box. And I think that's just something that I think again will be we will see in the evolution of these irons moving forward these hollow uh, core clubs which seems to be very much something we might see a little bit more of I think if they can just work on that uh, feel yes they've got the forged face but seeing it in the P790 you've got the forged face the hollow body construction and I don't think the acoustics are quite there yet to generate the kind of feel that would lead to being the ultimate set of irons because what they've done here ping is they've managed to get a refined looking club, a small and more compact looking club, packed with forgiveness, high launching, strong lofted, 
long, spinning. They're ticking a heck of a lot of boxes with this club. You've got to be impressed overall. And out there on the course, like I said, it performed very, very well indeed as well. You can't do anything but give it a thumbs up, like I said. They're getting very, very close to achieving this kind of ultimate set of irons, I think. And the, the one final thing for me, like I said, is if they could just improve the acoustics, the sound of these clubs, uh, then yeah, it's, um, it's definitely getting there. But I think you've got to agree, i5 on an absolutely stunning looking set of irons, and it's performed unbelievably well as well. Anyway, that's enough from me. The whole point of all these reviews is to give you some guidance and that's about it. The important thing is, as ever, is get out there, try them for yourself, form your own opinions, get your own trackman data and uh, see what you make of it from there. As ever, thanks for watching, comments down below, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe if you don't already and uh, as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.